the following may not be suitable for all audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Man kills girlfriend, her mom, and her sister after she refused to braid his hair. A man is accused of gunning down his girlfriend, her mom, and her sister after she refused to braid his hair. John Matthews, 25, has now been ordered to be held without bail on three counts of first-degree murder in Chicago. He is said to have erupted in rage after Shanta Harris, 24, refused to cook his breakfast and braid his hair, reports CBS. She gave police a statement identifying him as a shooter before she succumbed to her injuries, says the Chicago Tribune. And Matthew's own grandmother also told authorities that he was a killer, say Cook County prosecutors. They say the incident was sparked when Harris said she wasn't feeling well enough to fulfill his demands. When Matthew struck Harris in the face, his grandmother intervened and helped her outside his home, but he followed. Harris tried to call her mom, but prosecutors claim Matthews then grabbed her phone and broke it. So his grandmother let Harris use hers. Prosecutors said Matthews continued to berate his girlfriend while she waited for her mom to pick her up. When Harris's mother, Frances, and sister showed up, they noticed a bruise around her eye and asked Matthews what had happened. Matthews said Harris didn't do sh for him and that he hated her and told everyone to get off his property, say prosecutors. That's when Jasmine Neal called cops to report Matthews had attacked her sister and was refusing to hand over their baby son, it's claimed. Prosecutor said Matthews then pulled out a handgun and shot Francis Neal in the chest, back, arm and leg. He is then accused of shooting Harris in the chest before turning the gun on Jasmine Neal as she tried to flee the scene. Harris was taken to hospital where she gave police a statement which identified Matthews as a shooter and alleged past instances of violence. He is even said to have disabled her cell phone from calling the police on 28 occasions, reports Daily Mail. Harris passed away almost three months after the shooting on September 5th, and her death was ruled a homicide. Matthews, 25, fled to Iowa after the shooting and was only arrested after he was involved in a car crash there in August, authorities said. He was extradited back to Illinois this week on a murder warrant. Judge Charles Beach II ordered him held without bail on Friday on three counts of first-degree murder, noting that his own flesh and blood has identified him as a shooter. Matthews' attorney, assistant public defender Rocio Armendariz, said in court Matthews has no previous criminal history. Matthews and his girlfriend, Shanta Harris, had been dating for two years, assistant state attorney James Murphy said in court. They had a son who was four months old at the time of the shootings. Babysitter squeezed one-year-old baby to death. A babysitter who beat a 20-month-old baby to death has escaped the death penalty and been sentenced to life in prison. Shayla Boniello, 30, pleaded guilty to capital murder on Thursday morning, according to the Milam County District Attorney in Texas, NBC KXAN reported. It previously emerged that Boniello admitted that she punched, slapped, shook and squeezed one-year-old Patricia Annie Rader out of frustration during the incident on December 3, 2018. Emergency crews rushed to the baby's grandfather's home in Rockdale following reports of an unresponsive child, but baby Annie was pronounced dead at the residence after EMTs failed to revive her. Boniello was arrested and charged with child endangerment before being charged with capital murder. The evil babysitter confessed that she assaulted the baby until she stopped moving. 
Defenseless Tart Annie sustained extensive injuries from the ordeal, including lacerations and bruising across her whole body. Court documents stated that Boniello confessed to squeezing the baby for three minutes until she felt her bones begin to pop and crush, according to an affidavit. The baby's grandfather had temporary custody of the child when the murder occurred. But according to KXAN, Annie's grandfather was in a relationship with Boniello, who was living with him after the pair met on a dating site. According to the Facebook page Justice for Annie, the baby's family members were not happy with Boniello's sentencing after they wanted her to receive the death penalty for her crime. A post on the page reads, Our family is disappointed with the fact that the death penalty was taken off the table. Life in prison isn't a severe enough penalty for what she has done to Annie. Rachel Bond, the great aunt of Annie, told ABC 25 that since Boniello showed Annie absolutely no mercy whatsoever, the killer shouldn't receive mercy either. However, the prosecution reviewed the case and determined that Boniello had sustained a traumatic brain injury and had a non-violent past, according to a report by the Eagle. These two factors played into the decision to give the 30-year-old life in prison instead of sentencing her to death. Pick of COVID vaccine trial patients' feet covered in sores used to spread anti-vaxxer fare. Outrageous anti-vaxxers have used a picture of a Pfizer COVID vaccine trial patient's foot covered in sores to falsely promote fares on social media. Patricia Chandler from Texas said she developed a mystery skin condition in October, less than a week after she participated in Pfizer's coronavirus vaccine trial, in which she was given a placebo. In a now-deleted YouTube video, Chandler said that her illness began when she went for a walk on a chilly afternoon. She said she began to experience pain in her left foot and her husband suggested it might be her shoes rubbing. However, when she got home, she found that her heel had become painfully swollen. A huge purple and red blister that was spilling with pus then appeared. Chandler visited a number of doctors who suggested causes including fixed drug eruption, a bad skin reaction to a medicine, and wondered if the vaccine trial she was participating in could be to blame. She had received her second injection five days before the blisters first developed on her feet. However, the cause was not confirmed. Rebecca Moore, Chandler's cousin, set up a GoFundMe page to help Chandler with her medical bills and posted photos of her blistered foot on the page. The photo of her foot went viral and was leapt on by anti-vaccine activists quick to criticize the injection. One message read, Supposedly, this is a vaccine trial participant. Ready to roll up your sleeve? See, they are trying to deliberately hurt us with the vaccine, another Twitter user wrote. The page initially stated that Chandler had been a volunteer in the COVID-19 vaccine study and had a severe adverse reaction, but it did not clarify that doctors had not confirmed this, and it later emerged that Chandler had not even received the vaccine but was actually given a placebo, a small injection of salt water according to medical reports obtained by BBC. And her sudden foot inflammation had nothing to do with the injection. When this emerged, Chandler said she began to receive online abuse from people who called her an idiot, drug addict, and con artist. She received messages from anti-vaccine activists chastising her for taking part in the trial and from people who accused her of spreading fake news. Chandler told the BBC, The fact that these anti-vaxxers are using this to fuel their agenda is infuriating. However, she acknowledged the wording on her GoFundMe page had been misleading, saying, I have to assume some culpability for putting my story out there. It's social media. You share it for one second and it can get picked up and go viral. My injury had nothing to do with the vaccine. My bad. People make mistakes. 
five days after supposedly receiving a placebo, she suddenly develops this horrific injury from simply walking. It looks to me like her feet are beginning to rot or that she has severe frostbite. But she could only have severe frostbite if she had been walking bare feet in the snow for quite a while. Also, where is the proof that they gave her a placebo and not the COVID vaccine?